Hi, how are you? Today the topic of discussion is nutrition assessment. It is a measurement of nutritional status by different means like anthropometrics, biochemical or clinical data, and dietary history etc. Nutritional assessment can be done by direct method or by indirect method. Direct methods are commonly used in social sciences, in sociology, anthropology, in food and nutrition, in public health. Community-based research is based on the direct methods. The uh, list of direct methods is anthropometric methods, biochemical and laboratory methods, clinical methods, dietary evaluation or assessment methods, and energy balance. We see one by one all of these, what are they and how we can measure these. The second is indirect method. We not directly assess the nutritional status, but we can assume with these variables that the nutritional status of that community or population would be normal or not. So uses community health indicators that reflects nutritional influences. Examples are ecological variables such as uh, crop production, similarly soil fertility, food import and export, and staples production etc. Then economic factors, per capita income, population density and social habits, vital health statistics, particularly infant mortality, and under 5 mortality and fertility index, different types of mortality we see in this type of assessment. Neonatal mortality, maternal mortality, infant mortality, under 5 mortality and such indicators. We will discuss direct methods uh, in detail but not the uh, indirect methods. So first is anthropometric method. It is the most common used method uh, in clinics as well as in social science researches. What we do in th that method? We measure the body height, weight and proportions and it is used to evaluate both under and over nutrition and that is the reason it's most important method, it's most common method and most cost effective method. In anthropometric methods, what we can measure, we can measure the body mass index, we can calculate BMI, it's uh, short term is BMI, then we can measure the mid arm circumference, skin fold thickness, head circumference, head and chest ratio, hip or waist ratio. In listed methods, body mass index is the most commonly used method for adults and for children. We mm, commonly measure the mid arm circumference and head circumference. Instruments are available uh, for measuring these methods. Measuring strips, which you can see in the background of uh, uh, this screen, these are used for measuring mm, these methods. Weight machine and uh, all measuring strips. So, uh, for body for calculating body mass index, there is a formula. We we we'll take the weight of person in kilograms and height in meters and by using this formula we calculate the BMI of, of a person. So there are various categories of BMI uh, on the basis of which we can say that the person is uh, normal, healthy or he is malnourished. Malnourishment may be under nutrition or over nutrition so we can measure both type of uh, malnourished status by using the BMI formula and you can see that 18.5 uh, to 24.9 is the healthy weight range less than 18.5 is considered as underweight while more than 25 is our nourishment which is further divided into three categories 25 to 29.9 BMI is considered as overweight, then 30 to 39.9 is obesity, and more than 40 is severe obesity. When we see the advantages of uh, anthropometric method, then it's a precise, accurate, and in 
expensive method. Readings are numerical. Uh, BMI, for example, we say the BMI of that person is uh, 19, or you can say 24, or um, 25 point something. So these are all numeric data. It uses standardized technique. Then readings are reproducible. Today, my BMI is 24.5. Then tomorrow, I can calculate it again. Uh, and uh, there will be no difference. Non-expensive and need minimal training. One time, uh, you buy the instrument and then you can use it on numerous people. Suitable for large sample size. In community-based studies, we take the sample size of 100, 400, more than 400. So, it's the easiest way to take the measurements. Representative population sample in one community, if we take the sample of uh, 100 or 400 depending on the population of that community and we can generalize our results. There are some limitations of this method which are inter-observer errors in measurement. Let's suppose I am observer, I am taking the height of a person and I am doing mistake in, in taking the height in measurements. So, there will be difference in height in 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch. I am not taking it correctly by adopting the correct uh, techniques. Then it's the kind of observer error and it can occur. Limited nutritional diagnosis. Yes, we can see that the person is overnourished or malnourished, but we can't identify what type of nourishment is this. And we can't uh, specify the nutrient, either it's a vitamin deficiency or which specific vitamin deficiency or which specific mineral deficiency. Uh, we can't identify such type of deficiencies, but we can um, identify that it's malnourished or undernourished. Problems with reference standards, for example, local versus international standards. Some standards vary according to the geographical area and uh, these may be different. So, results of one community or one population or one geographical area, we can't generalize it to the other community, other population or other geographical area. So, these are the limitations of anthropometry method. Second is clinical methods. These are used on the clinics. These are simplest and most practical method. In clinical methods, we see the signs and symptoms and then general clinical examination with special attention to organs like hair, gums, nails, skin, eyes, tongue, muscles, bones, and thyroid glands. In this method, we take the medical history of the patient uh, treatment. If uh, the patient received uh, previously and what type of medication he, he received earlier. So by keen observation of uh, uh, the organs, of the mentioned organs, we can assume what type of deficiency the patient has. The advantages, it's a fast and easy to perform. Uh, you can say it's a simple observation. We observe and uh, then inexpensive. So, no, no money is required and then non-invasive. But what is the limitation? Did not detect early cases. For example, a person is calcium deficient. On his nails, the symptoms not appear until he is chronic deficient of the calcium. We talked about gums, about hairs. The structure of these organs not changed until the patient is chronic deficient of the specific minerals of the specific vitamins so it's a big limitation of this method that we did not detect early cases third method is biochemical method in biochemical method we do diagnostic tests in the labs advantages are detect early changes before the appearance of clinical signs 
so uh, uh, clean in you it's a disadvantage of clinical method but advantage of biochemical method is that we can detect early changes before the appearance of clinical signs it's precise accurate and reproducible in serum protein test we do serum calcium vitamin b and hemoglobin in blood biophysical assessment including uh, radiological examination for long bones such type of test we do in the lab and uh, we uh, got the results limitations of biochemical method it's a time consuming method in lab you uh, give the specimen and next day you collect the results expensive definitely we are not applied on large scale if you do a uh, study in the community with 400 sample it's very difficult to do a test of 400 people especially if the test is expensive needs trained personnel and facilities so you can't do test by yourself you need a specific person for that, you need a technician for that, and then you need a lab for that. So these are the limitations of biochemical method. Group 4 is dietary evaluation method. Again, it's a most common you most commonly used method in social science studies, and the majority of the assessments are based on this method plus BMI, which is the part of uh, anthropometric method in this uh, the dietary evaluation methods in this um, there is a list of uh, methods first is 24 hours dietary recall method then food frequency questionnaire dietary history since early life food diary technique and observed food consumption in these uh, five methods 24 hours dietary recall method and food frequency questionnaire is the commonly used methods Yes, others are also used, but uh, less frequently. Advantages are um, simple questionnaires. We use very simple questionnaires for the N24 hours uh, recall method and food frequency questionnaire. These are very simple questionnaires and easy and depends on short term memory. So there is no chances of recall bias. The disadvantages are that uh, questionnaires are long, although they are simple but long. Errors with estimating serving size uh, needs updating with new commercial food products to keep pace with changing dietary habits. So these are the disadvantages of this method. We will discuss uh, uh, dietary assessment methods in more detail because these are the most commonly used method in social sciences and also the biometric methods yes we also discussed this in detail and number five is energy balance in energy balance we see functional capacity and nutritional status and bed rest or inactivity etc while making the dietary plans nutritionists uh, will focus on this method energy balance method so in social science studies um, there is no um, specific use of this method, but uh, in clinical side or uh, individual level, this method is important. So, out of these, as I said earlier, anthropometric method and dietary evaluation or assessment method are the most commonly used methods. And uh, in next videos, I will discuss these in details how we can measure the different uh, anthropometrics. And uh, in one other video, I will discuss the dietary assessment methods because these are the most commonly used methods in community based research. Thank you for listening this video and uh, subscribe the channel, like it, share it. Have a nice time.